Okay, this video is going to be a description of how to log your green sheets or your documentation of clinical experience, which are going to be the records that you receive for each of the cases that you scrub. They're very important because they're the only documentation that we have for your clinical experience that will be required at a certain number in order for you to sit for the national certification exam once you graduate from this program. So you will see at the top it says documentation of clinical experience, but a lot of your preceptors are going to refer to them as your green sheet because they're very familiar with these sheets as your documentation for your clinical cases. As you look at them, you will see that there are various different skills listed. You will see at the top, there's a date, a student, procedure, and surgeon. You also will have off to the side the general and the specialty, which will signify which area each of your cases falls into, as you'll have differing requirements for the different types of areas that we scrub. Before you do your case, you will fill out the top. You will fill out the date, your name, the procedure that you're scrubbing, and the surgeon. Your preceptor will fill out the rest of the green sheet after the case is finished. They will check mark in the yes or no category whether you perform the skills that are listed underneath the first scrub roll skills and the second scrub roll skills. And then they will provide you hopefully with some constructive feedback. They will also have more room on the back side that they can add that information. And then they will need to sign at the bottom. In general, the person signing your green card should be the person that you scrub the case with. However, if in the first couple weeks of clinical education one you are performing in the clinical or in the circulating role you can have your circulating nurse sign your green cards as well but in general it's usually the surgical technologist that you scrub with during the procedure once you do get scrubbed in as a member of the field so when we look at these green cards when we start to determine if the case you scrubbed was a first scrub case or an s1 case or a second scrub case, an S2 case, or an observed case, we will look at the bottom of the green card, will tell you exactly how you determine if your green sheet is an S1 or an S2. So in order to receive an S1, you have to have all five of the first scrub skills checkmarked in the yes category, which means that you verified the supplies and the equipment, you set up the sterile field, you performed the counts, you pass the instrumentation, and you maintain sterile technique. In order for it to be an S1, you do have to five, have all five of those skills checkmarked. In order to, for it to be an S2, you have to have less than five of the first scrub skills that we just talked about, so four or less in the yes category, and at least one of the second scrub skills at the bottom, which could be sponging, suctioning, cutting suture, holding retractors, or manipulating the endoscopic camera on a laparoscopic case or an arthroscopic case. So you would have to have at least one, not all, but at least one of those second scrub skills checkmarked and less than five of the first scrub skills at the top checkmarked. So, so you could have none at the top and just one of the second scrub skills. It's likely that you will have at least one at the top because hopefully you maintain sterile technique while you were scrubbed in up at the field. But you would, could have less than five and at least one of the second scrub skills. Now in order for it to be an observed case, that's where you have less than five at the top and none of the second scrub skills are checkmarked. This would be a case such as maybe a total joint where you just observed, but yet you maintain sterile technique while you were in the unsterile role, making sure that you maintained a safe distance from any of the portions of the sterile field. So less than five at the top and none of the second scrub skills or check mark will be an observe case. So as we start to look at this in our progression notebook, which is where we're going to log our green cards, we're going to go through a few examples of how to identify if it's a first scrub case, a second scrub case, or an observe case, and also how to identify what each of the procedures uh, which of the categories it falls into, is it a general or is it a specialty, and which of the specialties it will be. So in your progression notebook, you will have a section that's called your clinical experience records. It's usually towards the back of your progression notebook, but some people will kind of move it around as well. So as you start to look in here, on the first day we signed the rules, which said that it's very important that you do an accurate assessment of your documentation of your clinical experience because it is related to the requirements that are needed to sit for the national certification exam and graduation from this program as well. So it really is against the rules to falsify your records, and so you have to make sure that you are recording your cases correctly. So if you ever have any questions, just make sure that you ask your instructors as well. Well, 
So as we start to take a look in here, you will see there's a document here that talks about clinical experience roles. This is everything we just talked about. How to determine is a case a first scrub case, is it a second scrub case, or is it an observed case? So if you have some questions, you can watch this video again, and you can also refer to this document, which again will tell you that in order for it to be a first scrub, you have to have all five of the first scrub skills. In order for it to be a second scrub, you have to have less of less than five of the first scrub skills and at least one of the second scrub skills. And for it to be an observe, you have less than five of the first scrub skills and none of the second scrub skills. Okay, so then this next document will talk about how many of each of the different types of cases are needed. So I think we might come back to this after we first show you how to log the green card since we've just talked about identifying what is a first scrub and what's a second scrub. So after the case, remember before the case you fill out the top, after the case your preceptor is going to fill out all the check marks and then sign the bottom and hopefully provide you with some feedback here. So we'll say this is one of our green cards that we've gotten back from our preceptor John Smith. Okay, it was for a carpal tunnel release with Dr. Heiss, and it looks like I have all five of the top check marked here and also one of the second scrubs. So I know that this is an S1 or a first scrub case because I have all five of these check marked. Now I do need to identify, is this a general or is it a specialty case? So how you're going to do that is in your progression notebook, there's going to be a listing of some various different types of procedures, and you're going to look up the name of the procedure. So you see we, here we have general procedures. Now carpal tunnels really do fall into two categories. They can fall into orthopedics. You will see a carpal tunnel. Um, sometimes it will fall into this category, but most often we log it in the neurosurgical category because for, for most people you will have less experience in the neurosurgical category than you will in the orthopedic category. So here you will see carpal tunnel release listed. So I will know that that is a specialty. So I'll go ahead and circle specialty. And I can write neuro on here too. And then I'm going to need to find my neuro sheet in my case logs in order to log that green card. Now a lot of people will go ahead and tab out their green or their case logs so that they can easily find them. So I would see here's my general next to my cardiovascular. Uh, whatever helps to keep you organized will benefit you as you start to do this because you're going to be doing this every day as you log cases in your clinical site. So I will find my neurosurgical sheet. So you see here at the top it has neurosurgical. It also gives you the abbreviations for the different roles. So we have S1 is a first scrub, S2 is a second scrub, and O is an observe. So for this one we said it was an S1. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and write this information right here on this log sheet. So I want to write the date, you know, was 1120. My procedure was a carpal tunnel release. You can use abbreviations, just make sure that they're standard abbreviations. My surgeon was Dr. Heiss. My preceptor was John Smith. And my role, we said, was S1 or first scrub. Now this instructor initials category will be initialed by your preceptor or by your instructor either if you're a Lincoln student it'll be on a weekly basis when you turn in your progression notebook or it'll be by your distance instructor whenever they come visit you in the clinical site or when they request you to bring your progression notebook with you such as when you would come for the instrument exam and other different times that you might visit the Lincoln campus. So after you've logged that green card, then what you want to do is take a paper clip and go ahead and paper clip that green card to that log sheet so that when your instructor goes through your progression notebook, they can take a look at the green card, look at how you logged it, and after they make sure that it is the correct procedure on the correct log sheet, logged with the correct rule, then they'll go ahead and put their initials right beside that case that's been documented on the log sheet. Okay, let's look at a different green card. So for this green card, we have, again, our student Jane Doe, a laparoscopic cholecystectomy with grams for Dr. DeBakey. We take a look here and we see that we have one, two check marks in the first scrub, so that's less than five, so we know it's definitely not a first scrub. And we have two check marks down here, so that means that less than five plus at least one down here equals a second scrub case.
If I didn't know what the specialty was for this, again, I would look back at my log sheets back here with the procedures, and I would find that I have a laparoscopic, so we have the laparoscopic appendectomy there at the bottom, and up here at the top we have our laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So I know that this is a general case, so I'll go ahead and circle that. I will then go and find my general sheet, and again, we're going to log it just like we did the last one. So I have my date, my procedure, my doc, which was Dr. DeBakey, my preceptor, which was Sally, and then my role, which we said was S2, because we had less than five and at least one of the second scrub skills. And again, go ahead and take that green card, paper clip it to the log sheet, and then when your instructor takes a look to make sure that it's logged on the correct sheet and the correct role, then they'll go ahead and initial over here at the side. All right, let's take a look at a few more examples. Not necessarily do we have to write them on the sheet, but we're going to take a look at them and identify. So here we have a total knee arthroplasty for Dr. Meyerding. So that type of a case, again, if you didn't know what it was, you could go ahead and take a look. Of course, anytime we're working with a joint, more, most commonly it's going to be an orthopedic case. But if you weren't sure, you would want to make sure that you look at these log sheets and go ahead and try to identify where does that procedure fall into, what category, to make sure that you get it on the correct sheet and in the correct area. So we look here and we see that our total knee arthroplasty is an orthopedic procedure. So again, I would mark that on my green card under specialty and ortho. As we try to identify what role we have here, we have two check marks in the yes category in the first scrub skills and we have no check marks down here. So we remember that in order to be a second scrub, we have to have at least something marked down here. So since we don't, this case would be logged as an observe and we would list it as an O. Another green card example that we have is when you have two cases that are performed during the same procedure. So for this one, we had a bilateral mastectomy with immediate reconstruction and we had two different surgeons. We had Dr. Coker doing the mastectomy and Dr. Freeman doing the reconstruction. So if you weren't sure, you would look those two cases up and you would find that the mastectomy is general and that the reconstruction is a specialty and it's in plastics. So when you have a case that has two different specialties, so we have a general and then we have a specialty, it actually counts as two cases and you wanna log it twice on both of those specialty sheets in your case log. Now, of course, you're only gonna have one green sheet, so you'll just put paper clip your green sheet to one of the sheets that it's logged on. But as you can see here, we have five check marks in the first scrub skills. So this would be logged as an S1 on the general and on the specialty log sheets. They do have to be two different specialties though. So if you had a, um, say a laparoscopic appendectomy with an inguinal hernia repair, both of those are general cases, so it would only count as one case. It has to be two different specialties in order for it to count as two different cases and to be logged on two different log sheets. Another example we have here is of a procedure called a cystoscopy. Now, when we talk about the case requirements, it will talk about diagnostic endoscopy cases. So diagnostic endoscopy cases are basically where we take a scope and we put it in a natural orifice and just look around to see what's going on, but we don't really do anything. Um, those are called diagnostic endo and you can only count 10 of those in the second scrub roll towards your case numbers. So even though when you take a look at this green card, you'll see that I have five check marks up here and it looks like I would log this as an S1. I can only log the diagnostic and endoscopic cases as S2 and I can only count 10 of those towards my case requirements. Another example of a green card that you might get that is a little confusing is where you see a category where it says NA or non-applicable. So this case is a phacal emulsification for Dr. Cataract. So if you didn't know what that was, you would take a look and find out that that's an eye procedure. Okay, so we have, we have a cataract extraction, a phacal emulsification right here. So I would mark that as a specialty in the eye. 
area. Okay. So you will see that I have four check marks in the S1 area or the first scrub area and one that says NA because of course sometimes on eye procedures such as a FACO we're not going to be performing counts because everything the incision is too small that it's not necessary to perform counts. So you might look at that and go well you only have four check marks you need five but that's not true because if we if we had needed to do a count we would have done a count and therefore we would have performed all of those skills that are needed for it to be called an S1 case. So this case would be logged as an S1 even though you have that NA category there because if you needed to do a count, if it was a case that required a count, you were still participating in the first scrub roll and would have performed that count. It's just that on this type of a case, the count wasn't necessary. So anytime any of the skills that are required are not applicable or not necessary, anytime you see an NA, that you basically consider to be a yes check mark. So on this one, we would count it as an S1 and would log it as such on our case log. Okay, one other category or one other green card that might be a little bit confusing to you is if you uh, end up with a green card that comes from your preceptor and you look at it and the reason that you didn't get the verify supplies and equipment check marked, you see that this preceptor is marked it in the no category, is because you were in a case previously. So maybe you were in room two and you had to quickly run over to room three and they had already gone through the case cart and verified the supplies with the preference card. In that type of a situation, the reason that you missed out on that is because you were doing a previous case. So what you're gonna need to let your instructor know is that yes, you definitely would have done those skills had you had time and had you been in that room, but you were finishing up a previous case. So your instructor has the ability to then change your green card and initial it so that yes, you get credit for those, diff those skills that you may have missed out on because you were in a previous room. We don't want you altering your green card, but please let your preceptor or your instructor know that yes, you should receive credit for those skills because either you were in there before the case started and you looked through the preference card because sometimes that happens and then you go to another room and do your case and then you come back and maybe they've opened already before you've gotten back. But if there's ever a situation where you feel you should receive credit for those skills because you would have done them or you did do them, but it wasn't marked appropriately on your green card, please let your instructor know so that we can give you the appropriate credit. So if we do then alter the doctor's or the, pre the green card so that it shows the skills that you actually performed, then we will go ahead and log this as an S1 case. Again, this is another case that gets easily confused as to which category it goes in. So this happens to be a porticath insertion. So this is where we put in a venous access line, usually for chemotherapy. So on those, we're going to log those under cardio, or excuse me, peripheral vascular. Don't you want to find that sheet so that we can see where it talks about a venous access device implantation is going to be your porticaths. So we'll wanna make sure that we log that on our peripheral vascular sheet and not in our general sheet. Because again, you're probably gonna have plenty of general cases, but you'll wanna spread out your specialties instead of logging them all on one sheet. So that specialty, again, would be PV for a porticath insertion. And again, if you had a skill that wasn't marked appropriately by your preceptor, please talk to your instructor and then they can change that for you so that you get the credit that you should for those types of cases. Again, always, if you have any questions about logging your green cards, just talk to your preceptor or your instructor and they can hopefully answer any questions that you have about that. Okay, when we talk about what's required for the various different types of areas, we have 120 cases in the first and second scrub roll that are required prior to graduation. And then those are further broken down into general cases and specialty cases. Uh, this document will have all of this information written out. I really like the table document as I think it gives it kind of broken down a little bit more. It's kind of easier to look at. So you'll see down here our total number is 120 cases. Of those, 80 of them have to be first scrubs, 40 of them have to be second scrubs. And then those are further broken down into I have to have 20 general first scrubs and 10 general second scrubs. I have to have 60 specialty first scrubs and 30 
specialty second scrubs. Now when we talk about the specialties in the first scrub category, you can only count 15 of each specialty, and you need to have your specialty split out over five different specialties. Now your first scrub cases, should you get over, say in orthopedics, say you had 20 first scrubs, you can always count those first scrubs as second scrubs if necessary as well. But remember, you can only count 15, so you want to make sure that you're not overloading yourself in one specific specialty area. Make sure that it's split out over various different specialties. Down here, you'll see where it talks about the diagnostic endoscopy that we were talking about before. So you have 10 diagnostic endoscopy cases that may be applied towards the second scrub role. That's why even though it had all five of those checkmarked in the first scrub area for our cystoscopy that we were looking at before, we had to log it as an S2 because it can only count towards our second scrub. Also, something to note down here is that you can count five vaginal delivery cases in labor and delivery towards your second scrubs as well. So even though you may get a green card that has all five check marks at the top and may look like an S1, it needs to be logged as an S2 for a vaginal delivery case. So again, just to reiterate, we have 120 cases total that we need in the first scrub and the second scrub category. There's 80 total first scrubs that we need, further broken down into 20 generals, 60 specialties, 15 in any individual specialty that can be counted towards that 60, and it needs to be split out over five different specialties. The 40 second scrubs are then broken down into 10 general and 30 specialty, and your various specialties are listed here as well. And then you can count, again, that diagnostic endo, 10 cases towards your second scrub, and five vaginal deliveries as well. Please refer to these documents in this video should you have any questions. They will be online. They're in your progression notebook. And then always call or email your instructors if you have any questions about this clinical documentation.